loading on that. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thank you yeah. for coming out this afternoon, mm -hmm. visiting with us. So let's start off with your name, a nickname mm -hmm. if you had one, if you're hanging out the island. Well, I don't know if I had a nickname. My name's John Glenn, and uh, I don't remember what year it was <laughs> that I was there. <laughs> a lot of those days are hazy as far as the time stamp of it. But uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was around, I guess, uh, early 80s or middle 80s, I guess, 84, something like that, in the last days of the island. I worked sound here. and. Uh, in this location, I guess. The building's gone, it looks like. And so, anyway, I guess I'm kind of standing where the sound booth would have been, or close to it. And uh, So the stage would be behind you? Right, I guess so. Yeah, the stage would be behind me, I guess. And uh, and it was, yeah, the sound booth was just a little wooden thing around, uh, you know, some plywood around an area that you could run out of and ride right onto the stage to, to you know, do what you needed to do, you know. There you go. And uh, so, you. you're right. Okay. So. Uh, Anyway, but um, so the bar, the edge of the bar, would be right here. No, no, the bar was kind of more that way. It was there was a space, then the bathrooms on the left, and then the bar was beyond that. Right. Okay. Yeah, there was a couple of bathrooms there. They were just rooms. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, so you know, punk clubs. You know, it's kind of a different thing. You know, than most bathrooms that you see. <laughs> so you know. What was it like working sound for a punk rock club? Well. Uh, Basically, I, I wanted to do it because I could do that and nobody else would help them. And I said, well, hell, I, you know, I had some time to do it. So I actually came and helped out. And one of the local, uh, one of the local guys that had, I, think, I believe it was a pawn shop or a jewelry store, I'm not sure which one, he donated some equipment actually so they could use it, some microphones, I think an amp, you know, and, and some stuff so they'd have something to play the, you know, for a sound system basically. So um, real nice guy. and. Uh, I got a phone call from him a number of years ago, and I don't know where he is now, but anyway, he provided mics and stuff, and the, I guess the club owners had a mixer. So anyway, it was, uh, it was great. I, a lot of local bands that played, and uh, I, I myself played in a couple of bands. And, uh, Which were the names are? Oh, the, I played in the Jigs, uh, I guess, uh, what were some of the names of them? I don't even remember. <laughs> uh, verbal Abuse, I, in the early days, I played with Nikki. Uh, with, with a couple of permutations of bands he was in. And uh, I guess, uh, oh, let me think. Uh, Killer Watts was another permutation of them uh, with Nikki. Uh, oh, let's see, the Jigs, I'm trying to remember who else. Uh, just very, there was a family tree of bands and everybody knew each other. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, plus uh, JR, who, the, who is the, the man that introduced me to the club here that I first came here, because I was curious about it. Uh, he. Uh, he supported, you know, acts and let him practice in his garage and stuff. And uh, DRI, they were 16-year-old kids, and they had little T-shirts on, and they needed a place to practice because their dad called them dirty, rotten imbeciles because they made too much noise. <laughs> so, so he let them. Jr. let them practice in his garage, and uh, and so we'd look in the door, and they played real. Fa Boy, these kids play real fast, you know. So we look in the door at them, and and they look and see what we we're doing, but they're they're they were having a blast, you know, and it was. And they went on to to uh, just keep doing that and did real well, you know. And uh, so there was a lot of that kind of stuff. Just a family tree of people that knew each other. I played in I don't know whose band sometimes or what, but we knew, all knew each other. We hung out, and this is kind of a place we came to for communion and to to enjoy music and enjoy a, a similar feeling and a the thought of rebellion about certain things, you know, whatever, you know, so that's, I felt at home here. I felt like, you know, I was an outcast, you know, I still do kind of sometimes. And <clears throat> so I could always come here and I got the truth. You know, I feel like I could see the truth, hear it. And, you know, it wasn't fake. There wasn't anybody posing or putting on a facade. You got real life when you came here. And that's what I, that's what I got out of it myself. So, uh, yeah. Step back okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. <clears throat> I, yeah. I believe, uh, if, if I remember correctly, uh, yeah. you, were, you were working here the last night of the island. Yes, uh, yeah. Can you share us uh, all, uh, as many details as you can recall about that last night? Well, let's see. I was. It was a normal night. I was, I was coming here to set up for whatever show it was. I don't even remember now. But uh, I had my microphones and my, my bag and stuff. And so I came in, set my mics up by the sound booth, and... Um, Oh, basically, there were some people in the club beforehand, and 
something, I don't know what was going on. It was kind of strange. But anyway, I just remember uh, there was two people in the club before the club opened. One, uh, one, was a, one was a guy dressed in a black jacket like a punk, you know, like everybody knew this is not, you know, he, we didn't, nobody knew him and it wasn't really, you know, it was like kind of fake looking. And there was a girl with him also, and apparently these were undercover cops. So uh, I was up on stage getting ready, I guess setting up mics. I remember doing something, getting ready for the show, you know, cleaning off the stage, whatever. And uh, basically I remember seeing about five or six blue shirts come in the front door. And that, that guy that, who was dressed like a punk, he stuck a gun in my side and said, turn off the sound now. I just had some music playing, whatever. Stuck a gun on my side. I said, hey, it's okay, man. <laughs> so he, at gunpoint, with a gun on my side, shoved me over the soundboard. I shut it off. Uh, I said, what's going on? You know, I just, I'm just the sound guy here. What's up? You know, and so the cops came flooding in. They came in and basically just shut the place down, took the, took the, the club managers, I guess, to jail or whatever, and, and they let me go, basically. Uh, but I think that was, the, that was the last of it that I knew about of the island. So it became other things after that. But, but the funny thing is I remember coming out the front door and the, the Houston police had the whole street shut down, which I thought was kind of strange. You know, that was kind of odd, you know, that they would shut the street down to close a club down or whatever it was there, you know, the idea that was there. Also, these undercover guys stole the microphones I had, which were donated by that guy. So. So it was kind of like, you know, what's what's all this about? You know, I thought that was not right and wanted to complain to City Hall, but I was a, you know, I was a punk kid that, you know, I thought, well, how far am I going to get with that? You know, so, oh, let me get in the line. And so uh, anyway, uh, so that was kind of that, I think, after that. And those two guys, they, you know, they were honestly trying to trying to keep the place going, but the, the I guess, you know, they went to jail and stuff, and it was it was the end of it, I guess. You know? was that? I'm sorry, who was it? The, one of the guys' name was Richard, and I forget the other guy's name. Kind of a big guy, and I can't remember his name. Uh, well, Richard Tom Call was involved. No, no, not Richard Tom Call. It was a, a Mexican guy named Richard. Oh, Indian? Yeah. No, no, not Indian, no. No, I remember Indian, too. Yeah, we knew Indian for years, and he was a real nice guy. No, this, this, this uh, he was managing the club in whatever capacity. I believe his name was Richard. JR probably knows some more details than I do. As, that's, as I recall, that was his name and the other guy, and they're still around, I think, but I haven't heard from them or anything, so I don't know. But they, uh, in the last days there, they were, I guess, managing the club in whatever capacity, so I'm not sure who actually owned or what, who did what. I basically come in and just did what I did as a volunteer and volunteered what I did. And, you know, just did mainly a lot of local bands, but once in a while when a pro act would come in, they'd usually bring their own PA and their own people, so, you know, that's usually what the way it went, you know, so. Yeah. Now, how, uh, how, how, what was the difference in time? Or, you know, I think it, there was a, uh, a big fundraiser for an anti Klan uh, group, anti police brutality group. That yes, was here that was just before that, uh, I think, as I remember. I remember something about that and thinking maybe there's a connection with that, you know, but I don't know. I, you know, who knows? Were you there for that night? I w I w it seems like I was, yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying to remember. I, it seems like there was a, a band playing, which I was paying more attention to them than the anti-police stuff, really, you know, but maybe it was MDC, I think. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, I do remember some activity like that just before that happened. And it was, you know, obviously, you know, like say, the idea of closing the street off to, you know, to go in a club and shut it down was like, okay, what are they expecting? <laughs> like. I don't know, you know, you know, you don't typically, that's just seems strange to me, you know, so, so yeah. So what are your uh, favorite recollections about uh, hanging out the island? You described it. Oh, you know, man. It's a community and a place where you felt like you fit in. Yeah, well, you know, there were some incredible bands, stuff we'll never see again. You know, some of the bands from that time were just amazing. Uh, Hang on that yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. So okay. Were, you okay. Said, some bands that were amazing. Some yeah, just just some incredible things. Just people giving a hundred percent because they lived it, felt it, and did that. You know, and just loved the music because they could do what they wanted to do without any restrictions. 
incredible players playing, just incredible people just pouring out all their feelings that they felt. And you could go and do that and nobody questioned it or anything because it was accepted because that was that's what I liked about it. That it, I felt I could go see some music that, that was, you know, that told the truth and it, it wasn't uh, strained through anything. There was no compromises, just people doing what they wanted to do the way they wanted to do it, you know, and I liked that. And that's why I got away from the rock stuff. I was looking for something else, you know, because that's what I saw in rock and I, I just wanted to see, to look for something else, you know, so that's what I found. And I'm glad I did because I saw some stuff that I'd probably never see again, quite like it was, you know, it's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, do you have a particular um, incident or memory, just something funny or kind of well, let's cut. Uh, actually, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you were around. There, there was a, probably not you, but there was someone uh, going through some tapes and describing someone who was, uh, was uh, being electrocuted. There was, there was something shorting out. I don't know if that, that came uh, after, but before you. It may have been. I, yeah. I don't recall that specifically. Let me think. He literally launched himself. He was shorting himself. That could have been. That could have happened, I'm sure. I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess to me, one of, one of the acts that just comes to mind right now is, uh, I guess the, I guess the Bush Tetras or some, some, some big acts from New York came in, and Three Day Stubble would of course come out and play sometimes before these any act. You know, they they come out and they'd come out in their KFC hats and and play their music, and and the drummer had a a set of coffee cans. That was what he had. So I came out. I said, okay, where's the kick drum? How do I mic this? You know. So, Anyway, but we I stuck a mic and whatever it was, and they'd play their set, and the guitar player'd spaz out on stage and you know do his thing, and it was it was great. Those guys were awesome. So it was bands like that, just completely something off the wall that was fun to see, and and it was different, you know. And there nobody, there's no pretentiousness or anything, you know. It was just completely honest stuff, you know. And um, and I guess uh, you know just just a lot of memories of, of various uh, incredible. Acts. I remember one uh, one band. I forget what their name was. It, we, we I think we played with them that night, but they were called the Motels or something like that. I forget their name. But the girl bass player was backstage, and they were spraying her down with finger ease. Besides, on the guitar neck, all over her too, <laughs> to, just, to just get this look. And she just she looked like a warrior getting ready for battle with the, being finger ease sprayed on her. It was just hilarious. Some of the stuff you saw was just like. You just won't see that again. It was just the way it was done, you know. It was just, it was interesting, you know. And I always enjoyed, just, you know, wondering what was going to be next, you know. <laughs> you know. Whoops. So. Yeah. Part of my. Yeah. My memory of it. Right. Yeah, a lot of great, great bands. Uh, local bands. Yeah. Acts yeah, coming in from everywhere. Names. Do you want to go through the list again? It's Oh my gosh! Well, local bands. I remember I did the Offenders, Really Red, uh, uh, the Needy. Uh, you know, those are some local bands I know that played here. Uh, oh gosh, uh, the list is huge. I mean, I don't want to, you know, leave anybody out. Pissed Youth, I, that little fanzine I had. Uh, so that's just from one little section of time that I that I'm just trying to remember. But there was a lot of them, and there was a lot of great acts, and they were all great. They all gave everything you know when they did it that was what was really neat about it and they did the best they could to do what they did you know it's pretty neat and i like that so you know uh but uh <laughs> God, i'd have to sit down as far as who all you know the bands were someone better qualified to do that probably yeah, could you know you're doing great you're yeah doing great. yeah oh yeah Okay, you want to take the mic or? No, no, no. You want to take it off or leave it on? Keep it on. Okay, I'll just, I'll just okay. take the mic cable, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Pick up this end. Yeah. I don't want to mess it up. So we can go ahead and just stand right here. Yeah, because yeah. this all this is. So. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, cool. There you are. Oh, cool. So, so you, uh, the sound booth is right here. And then, yeah. So the, this is probably the, the back wall is probably where we're that. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, if if uh, I'm trying to get a reference, if this is the far wall of the island, yeah, or the the, alley, the far wall of the side, alley. Yeah, and there was a side I'm not there. how big sure the alley was. I don't even remember. Yeah, I guess it was kind of small. Yeah, oh, okay. Small. Okay, yeah. then. Yeah, the sound width would have been right where you are. Yeah. 
And the this, bathroom's right here. The stage right over here. I don't yeah. even recall going to the bathroom at the I. Yeah. I, I just, no memory of right. that at all. Yeah, well, the, the bathrooms were right here. The bar was opposite that. Okay, oh, and the other right. thing was there was, a, there was a pool table, you know, as you walked in. But the interesting thing is there was a big picture of the earth right next to the pool table. Oh, on really? It. Yeah, and I always thought, okay, this is, we're kind of doing medicine for the earth. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know, it's because it I was into my different Native American things and getting into okay. stuff at the time. And so anyway, there was a big picture of the earth and uh, that's all there was on the wall. The walls were black. There was a big picture of the planet earth, a pool table, and pretty much that's it. You know, a couple of chairs, whatever, you know. Now, did you get to interact with Phil? Uh, not much, yeah, yeah. I'd say hi to Phil or whatever. And yeah. not, I didn't know him very well at all. I, like I say, I've kind of kept to myself a lot, but but uh, Phil, I guess Phil was, was previous to what I did because like I said Richard and the other guy I guess managed it right. after that. I don't know where he went or what happened or yeah. really the story, but uh, but but yeah, I, I knew him. We knew each other by sight, but I didn't know him very well. No, yeah. yeah. Well, I understand he was the uh, basically uh, the, the manager and uh, that could he have would been, yeah. live here in the club during the week and then uh, <laughs> that very well may have been. <laughs> had a match at the club and I on the right. pool table. That, yeah, I remember it's, um, Phil sleeping on the pool table. We remember yeah. that sometimes because I guess he had to do that, you know. So, yeah. Now you had mentioned the other day that you had mm -hmm. uh, someone who uh, claimed who had like yes. the building and family. And Originally, stuff. yeah, so, uh, a yeah. friend of mine knows, knows and, him. Yeah. Uh, dig through those phone numbers and kind of kick back to okay. that. We're, we're kind of. I'll try and get it before I leave here. I'll try and give you that number oh, okay. while it's on my mind because, okay. yeah, because uh, this week's going to be kind of busy coming up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that sounds good. You have a gig yeah. this evening, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm playing, uh, playing at uh, Dan Electro's with Kenny Cordray. Wow. Uh, they're doing kind of a Jeff Beck tribute. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I still kind of, I like the, you know, I, I, I still remember, that's kind of what I grew up with, the old rock stuff. And so I still, you know, I still play sometimes as a, either as a hired gun or, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, but I still keep in touch with a lot of people from the island in those days. I still know many of them, and because, uh, like I say, that was a, it was a pretty big part of my life, and always will be, and I'll always remember it because I learned a lot there, you know, and I I grew up a lot, you know, yeah. being there, you know. Oh, I remember one time coming here on Christmas Eve. Right. I think it was a Christmas Eve. The wind was blown. It was probably at least 30 degrees. I just came here in a shirt. And I and I parked. And there was nobody here. The street was empty. Uh, the door was shut. There was nobody outside of it. I thought, now nah, there's nobody here. And I went in, and UK Subs was setting up to play. Yeah. And I and I went up, and I go, is there a show here tonight? And then he's like, yeah, yeah. You just hang with us. It's all right. You can stay here, and party with us. <laughs> I said, well, so y'all playing? Where's all the crowd? He says, well, it's Christmas Eve. This is it. You know. So I said, well, great. You know. So I just sat on the stage, and we all had a great time. It was Christmas Eve. I don't know what year that was, but. I, it was me and I think one other guy and one other person might have showed up but they left so two people we saw UK subs here at the island some Christmas Eve in the 80s I don't know when it was but <laughs> but it was a trip because I almost left because there was you know obviously nobody didn't I didn't see anybody I guess their van was around the corner or whatever but anyway that was really cool because I had to get away from the Christmas stuff and go <laughs> and go and do the island. I had to go there and see what was going on, if there was anything, because I just wanted to go do that. That was kind of my church, you know, uh, yeah. you know, I guess, you know. Yeah, it was, so it was, it was a little place, man. I, I, yeah. You know, I remember uh, to get some of those pictures, uh, I took old equipment and I did it uh, a light yeah. magazine style. So I actually brought in studio lights. Yeah, I'm glad you did. Put it yeah. in the rafters. Right. To be able to light the room because the place was just you know, right. dark. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing you once in a while. I'd see a guy with a camera once. I mean, back in those days, I vaguely remember it. Yeah. yeah. And there's actually another photographer who, uh, who shot and yeah. uh, he went on to art school in New York and became a superstar. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. He, make, he had access to a big lab and he was making these big oh, I see. with prints. I saw some of those yeah. the other day. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name, but he did some pictures shown wow. uh, around here as well. He oh, really? Uh, yeah. So, Wow. So we may throw some of his stuff into this as well. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Don, That's is great. Anything else you think? You can walk around or are you, are you good? No, I think that's good. Okay. Well, I think we got something really solid here, man.